here we go. What is going on, everybody? My name is Mike from the Super Wheeler Bros, and we are back with another review of 24 Legacy. This time we're going to be taking a look at hours 5 through 9. Now I apologize I didn't get this review out last week. I did say I was going to do every 4 episodes. However, last week just got kind of bogged down and just didn't work out. But we're back reviewing this week for the last 5 episodes. And I gotta tell you, 24 Legacy is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Wow. It's a pretty good white knuckle thriller. I, I appreciate the thrill ride that we've been given here. I think that obviously you have to kind of forget about Jack Bauer and love the format. It's still a little bit, you know, like they did in the final seasons of the original run of 24 where the timing and the, the real time format, it's it's there. But a lot of it is really hard to to believe. They kind of throw it out the window a little bit. But it doesn't matter. All I want is riveting TV. And that's what this show has given me. It's doing a great job. And a lot of the characters are really, really well done. I think that the, the best portrayals, I think, are by far Jimmy Smith's as Senator John Donovan. Man, he's good. He is by far the best political figure that we've got. At least on the good side of things, because Gregory Itzen as Charles Logan was, he was the man. But as far as being a positive, you know, sign of good on the good side of things, since David Palmer, since Dennis Haysbert as David Palmer, he's definitely the best political figure. I know Cherry Jones was really good as President Allison Taylor, but Senator John Donovan, awesome. Jimmy Smith, you definitely class things up every time, dude. I love when he is announced in a movie or a show, because I know that he's going to be spot on. He's awesome. Unexpectedly, honestly, Eric's brother Isaac, played by Ashley Thomas, who knew he was going to turn into a really awesome character? I just love that everybody's got these different dimensions to their character. He, he was a rough and tumble and was pissed and didn't really want to see Eric or anything like that, didn't want to take care of Nicole, played by Anna Jopp. Eric's wife, but in the end, by the time episode 8 rolled around, his raid to save Eric and Andy from Jindala bin Khalid and his cronies and just stop this terrorist attack cold was awesome. I love that little raid. It was pretty awesome, and I think that his character has been great, real three-dimensional. And same thing with Anna Jopp. I mean, she's gone through the gamut of emotions. I mean... She was with Eric's brother Isaac, now she's with Eric, and she's being really tender and caring towards Isaac, but not betraying her husband, and I just love the dynamic that that's presented. Everybody at CTU is great, Mullins is great, uh, Edgar's sister, Mariana, she's awesome, played by Coral Pena, and Henry Donovan, played by Gerald McRaney, he's awesome, I love it, he's doing great, yeah, so... All the characters are awesome. Miranda Otto as Rebecca Ingram. She's a pretty tough chick. She's been one of the best female CTU agents since, you know, of course we had Chloe O'Brien. She was definitely the longest standing CTU agent, but she wasn't really a kick-ass one. But since Michelle, since Ryko Aylesworth as Michelle, I just, I, I'm really impressed with the cast and the way that they've presented the story. Jindala bin Khalid, I'm glad that he emerged after the first four episodes and we got a more clear picture of the villain this season because he was pretty dastardly and he was definitely an imposing villain and a, and a, a real threat because that was my biggest complaint in the first four hours of 24 is we didn't really have a big opposition there and I thought that he was awesome and Jindala was played by Raphael Akloak sorry I know I butchered that dude but you were excellent man I, I really enjoyed everything to do with that episode and and this this final episode I thought was pretty good a, a good way to kind of propel us into the final three episodes I, there was a lot of stuff I didn't expect there was some far-fetched things thrown in there like the security guard and his 
girlfriend that he's running around with behind his wife's back and you know they strap a bomb to her chest and that that was all exciting and an easy way for the real bad guy to show up Oded Fair who plays Nasiri for him to show up and really get Eric's whiskers up his antennas up you know saying something this is gonna be really bad a way for them to get Jindala back it, it was a little bit far-fetched but it ended up being a really good plot device because getting Senator John Donovan in serious trouble and making Rebecca Ingram kick some ass, I thought it was really, really cool. So it sets up everything really, really well. And as much as I've been gushing over this show and all the actors on the show, I got one big gripe. And my one big gripe is Eric. Eric Carter, the main protagonist for this show. The guy we're following, the guy we're supposed to identify with. Man, I love Corey Hawkins. Don't get me wrong, Corey Hawkins is awesome. And he's done a really good job with what he's been given. He tried to really present an important character, to present a three-dimensional character. But on the page, he is so one note and kind of boring. It's it's not being executed very well. I mean, he he doesn't relate well to almost anybody unless they're, you know, in that mindset. It's like everything that happens, he is so uh towards the mission. Like he will not deviate. His brother just saved his life and all he has to say for him is I love you for that, man. Really? You, you can't even give the man a hug? I know you're tough guys, but he just saved your life, and he's taking care of your woman. You don't have the decency to talk to her about it. And then we get back to their house after all this has been going on, and Rebecca Ingram had offered him a job at CTU. You didn't talk to her about it. It's like, it's so weird how he has no communication with this woman that he loves. Jack Bauer is one of the toughest characters ever, and he, he has had a singular unwavering focus all the time on this show but they don't write him into a corner which is I feel what they've done with Corey Hawkins Eric Jack was able to convey emotion he was able to cultivate relationships not push them away all the time there was always a three-dimensionality to it it was always presented that his feelings were conflicted Eric's never conflicted now granted we need people like that but not one that has ties where you've got a wife and a family and a brother and... Jack was always thinking about Terry and Kim and Audrey and Renee and anybody else he was involved with. Yeah, friends like Tony and things like that, they were... And Chloe, to a certain extent, were kind of expendable to a certain point, but... He always cared and tried to save everybody. And at the same time understood when they expressed concerns to him. I mean, hell, even when he was having, you know, heart, heart failure in season two, or he was having a, uh, a drug problem where he was hooked on heroin in season three, and so on and so forth. That's my biggest gripe with the, the show, is that it just, they're really writing Eric's character into a corner. Now, maybe it'll pay off by the end. I, I don't know, but I feel like it could be done better. You could at least allow him to feel you've got enough time. I mean, each episode is an hour. I mean, give him a couple minutes to express understanding for his wife's feelings. I know that, man, you really got to get on it, but you're telling me that that couldn't have waited a couple of episodes? It really plays into the real-time aspect. It does. Because somehow they, they are moving in and out of places like that right now. And it, it's okay to slow down just a little bit. I, I appreciate the pace and the action that the that this series has executed it's awesome i just want a little bit more out of eric's character and like i said i don't think it's the fault of cory hawkins at all i think he's doing a great job with what he's presented he's been able to convey emotions he's been able to convey toughness but they don't give him any time to develop anything besides this Terminator character that he's portraying and yeah I mean he's been able to get beaten up he's I guess he's shown some vulnerability there but that, that's really about it 
really is about it. Also, if I have one other thing I kind of wanted to discuss was the return of our good friend Carlos Bernard as Tony Almeida. Now, Tony Almeida in this show just all of a sudden is kind of working freelance for Rebecca. And they had a past after Michelle had passed away or whatever. I I'm a little confused how we've just kind of glossed over the fact that the man was brought up on charges for treason, was in jail... And now all of a sudden he's working freelance and we don't mention it yet. And he hasn't done much. He tortured Henry Donovan for a little bit. Trying to extract the information that he told John. Because he wouldn't admit it to anyone else. So that they could find Jindala. They just happenstance were able to find him. But that's all they've really done with Tony. And I'm just really hoping for more. I was hoping for... A little bit, I don't know, of satisfaction out of that. I mean, I know we're not getting Jack, and we've got a new lead character, and he's done a solid job. But I wanted more out of Tony. I thought that there's there's questions that need answering. There's so much more that he could do. He's such a great character. I just don't, I don't really see what the, the purpose of bringing him back was other than to give us a familiar face. Something to link the previous series to. So far, that's all it's been. So I'm hoping over the final three episodes, because he is in the previews, so he's definitely mentioned again. So hopefully he can come to the rescue. Maybe he can do something. I don't know. I'm hoping so, though. Overall, 24 Legacy has been really, really good. And despite my minor nitpicks there, I am really enjoying myself, and I can't wait to see how this all wraps up. There's only three episodes left to go, and then we get another return from the Fox Glory days where Prison Break comes back. And this time we're getting Schofield and Burroughs and all the other characters like C-Note and T-Bag and Kellerman and Sucre and Sarah and everybody. Everybody's coming back. Sarah Tan, Creddy, everybody. So it seems like the whole band's getting back together for that one. So we'll see what another nostalgia series will do for us. Um, 24 Legacy has been pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. If I'm going to score the last five hours of 24 Legacy... I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. A really enjoyable show, and I'm really glad 24 is back. It's a great format, and even though I want to see the wrap-up of Jack's story, I'll follow Eric a little more, in hopes that maybe we can get a little more character out of him. It's been an excellently run show. Everything has been interesting, well-timed, well-paced. I can't ask for much more. Some great bits in there, you know, with Dan Bukatinsky as Andy doing his thing, trying to stop the terrorist attack by uploading a virus. You know, he's trying to, when Jen Dalla was trying to recreate the sleeper cell hard drive, so there, there was some really awesome stuff in there, and I really enjoyed it. Tell me what you guys think of this season of 24 Legacy in the comments below. Are you guys really getting into it, or is it just not doing so much? It looks to me like as bad as this season of The Walking Dead has been, it's pretty consistently scoring higher than all the episodes are rated on IMDb from all of the users. So I'm a little confused by it because this is a very consistently good, entertaining show, and definitely better than The Walking Dead this season. So. Tell me what you guys think of this in the comments below. I definitely want to hear how you're feeling. If you enjoyed this review, definitely hit that like button. And if you want to see more reviews in the future or all of the other videos that we are producing on the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button. My name is Mike from the Super Wheeler Bros. And as always, my friends, have yourselves a super week.